Today, we're dropping a massive bomb into the Mariana Trench. But we're not stopping there. We're also going to nuke a hurricane and a volcano. What happens when you drop one of the deadliest weapons known to man into the world's greatest natural wonders? Let's start our nuclear experiment by dropping a nuke into the Mariana Trench. How would you deliver a nuke to the bottom of the Mariana Trench? What would this underwater explosion be like? And what kind of destruction would it cause? This is what if, and here's what would happen if we nuked the Mariana Trench. Welcome to the deepest, darkest depths of the ocean. The Mariana Trench is located in the Western Pacific Ocean, just 360 kilometers away from the island of Guam. You'll be traveling down 11 kilometers to Challenger Deep, the deepest point of the trench. Here, you could stack about 30 Empire State Buildings on top of each other before hitting the surface. You'd be among the brave few to venture into these high-pressure, pitch-black, and near-freezing waters. Joining the company of scientists, a naval officer, and even filmmaker James Cameron. But you'll be carrying the most precious cargo of all. The biggest nuclear bomb ever made. Okay, wait, before you worry about what would happen if you exploded a bomb at the bottom of the trench? You'd want to figure out how to get it there safely. If a bomb accidentally exploded near the surface, it could be dangerous for many people. You could think of it as a massive nuclear tsunami. Waves hundreds of meters high spreading out in all directions. This could create a hazardous situation for the islands neighboring the Mariana Trench, like Guam, Japan, or the Philippines. Luckily, these waves would behave differently than your regular tsunami waves. They would break earlier. That means they'd be smaller and less catastrophic when they reached land. But still, better to avoid this crisis and get that bomb safely down into the trench. To do this, you'd have to protect it from extremely high pressures. At the bottom of the trench, the pressure is so high it would be like having 100 adult elephants on your head. You'd want to use a special pressure vessel to transport the bomb, just like Operation Wigwam. In 1955, the United States detonated a bomb at a depth of 600 meters. It was twice as powerful as the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The explosion generated a massive bubble across the water, and deadly radioactive contamination spread across 13 square kilometers. But your bomb would be the largest nuke ever created more like the Tsar Bomba. This nuclear weapon was over 3,000 times more powerful than Little Boy, the bomb dropped on Nagasaki. And you'd have to take it much, much deeper than the wigwam test. At the moment of detonation, a bubble of hot steam would expand rapidly. In just a few seconds, it would cover an area of about one kilometer. On the surface, you'd see a massive bulge in the water. But it wouldn't reach great heights. That's because you would detonate the bomb so deep that the water pressure above would cause the bubble to collapse. But within a few seconds, that bubble would shrink, then start to expand outward again. This expansion and contraction would continue for three or four cycles. This would leave the water turbulent, hot, and mixed with radioactive debris. At least no neighboring coastal cities would have to worry about being wiped out by a tsunami. But you certainly wouldn't see the effects ending there. 
the increased temperatures from the explosion could create intense hurricanes. And the turbulent waters and radioactive material would have adverse effects on marine life. There would be mass casualties from the explosion. And deep sea fish could be blinded by the bright flash of light. Over time, you could see unexpected or surprising effects on the ecosystem near the detonation site. There are corals as big as cars after the 23 detonations at the U.S. nuclear testing site on Bikini Atoll, not to mention an abundance of aquatic animal life. But you could see mutations of marine life after a while. Now, that's what would happen if we nuked the Mariana Trench, but let's move our nuclear weapons from the sea all the way to the sky. Let's nuke a hurricane. Every year, about a half a dozen hurricanes reach the United States with effects ranging from heavy winds and some flooding to the decimation of communities, destroying homes and taking lives. Instead of bracing for impact with our sandbags and survival kits, what if hurricanes never hit land at all? What if we could stop these hurricanes by nuking them? How would we do it? Could this cause a nuclear apocalypse? Or would a bomb even stop a hurricane? This is What If, and here's what would happen if we nuked a hurricane. But first, what exactly are hurricanes? Well, they're massive storms that form over warm ocean water near the equator. Hurricanes are tropical storms. The water they form over needs to be above 26 degrees for them to work. This warm water creates humid air, which then gets thrust upwards by tropical winds to create storm clouds. Lighter winds outside the clouds steer them and help them grow. This cycle keeps happening until the storm has winds of at least 119 kilometers per hour. At that point, it's called a hurricane. They're usually about 160 kilometers in diameter and can be nearly as large as the state of Texas. Oh yeah, and did we mention that these things can last for days? You definitely don't want this coming to your home, so let's nuke it. Believe it or not, the idea of nuking hurricanes isn't new. It's been proposed for decades, dating back to the 1950s. The idea works like this. A submarine would travel underwater to below the eye of the storm. Once there, the sub would launch the nuclear bomb creating an explosion intended to blast out all the hot air and bring in cold air, which is denser. The cold air would slow down the wind and stop the hurricane. Okay, we have our nuke and are ready to launch it. There it goes. And, well, nothing happened. The hurricane is still there. That can't be good. The reason nothing would happen is because of the amount of energy a hurricane produces. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the heat released from a hurricane is equal to a 10 megaton nuclear bomb exploding every 20 minutes. In 1990, all of humanity used 20% less energy than a single hurricane produces. So the average bombs of today would hardly make a dent on a hurricane. Not only that, the hurricane would carry all that radiation, plutonium and other civilization-destroying materials from the air down to the land. As if a regular hurricane wasn't bad enough, we'd now have a radioactive one. As it moved across America, it would destroy cities with its wind and water while also dumping radiation on them. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> This time, we'll use an even bigger bomb, and we mean really big. To have enough energy and force to stop a hurricane, you'd need more than 100 atomic bombs. 
but to keep it simple, let's pack all that power into one giant bomb. If we released such a massive bomb, it would surely stop the most epic of hurricanes. But once the dust settles, you'd quickly realize that you destroyed most of the Earth in the process. So whichever way you attempt it, nuking a hurricane is not a good idea. And unfortunately, the number of hurricanes continues to increase. Researchers say that the warming of the oceans due to climate change is a reason why hurricanes are getting stronger and more frequent. And no, we can't nuke that problem either. So, nuking a hurricane is a terrible idea. Okay, for our last hypothetical experiment, let's try putting these nukes to good use by detonating them inside of a volcano. What happens next? Volcanoes. The ultimate natural force of destruction. They're unforgiving, uncompromising, and unstoppable. About 1,500 volcanoes around the world are considered to be active, with more than 10% of them in the United States. Is there any way we could stop them before the destruction begins? Could we literally fight fire with fire? What if we nuked an active volcano? Would it solve the problem? Or make it way worse? This is what if, and here's what would happen if we nuked an active volcano. Volcanoes are as cool as they are terrifying. They are an incredible force of nature, capable of destroying our lives on their path of destruction. But could we give them a taste of their own medicine? How could we nuke such a fiery inferno? Well, we'd need to bring out the big guns. The nuclear bomb dropped on Hiroshima, Japan during World War II was the equivalent of over 130 million kilograms of TNT. That had plenty of impact. Could we use something like it to blow a volcano to smithereens? First, we'd have to figure out the target. While it's difficult to predict when a volcano will erupt, there are some warning signs. Watch for things like tiny earthquakes, releases of steam and other gases from the volcano's mouth and bulging from the sides. Sounds like my last date. That being said, whether the volcano will erupt is still a massive educated guess. So let's say that our scientists locked on to an active volcano that's ready to blow. It would be a miracle if they could coordinate with the military fast enough to try and stop it. Ideally, we'd be able to predict it a few days before the volcano was about to explode. This would provide more than enough time for people to pack up their belongings and evacuate without causing the kinds of highway traffic jams we see during hurricanes, tsunamis, and other disasters. With everyone out of harm's way, geologists, volcanoologists, and weapons experts would determine any weak spots on a volcano's sides that could be hit effectively. Next, a highly trained crew of pilots would fly over the volcano, drop their payload, and get the heck out of Dodge. If things worked perfectly, as in if they used the exact right amount of explosives and hit the perfect spot in exactly the right way, the top of the volcano would crumble into itself, keeping the magma mostly underground. There might still be some seepage around the base of the volcano, but it wouldn't be anything like how the eruption would have played out naturally. But if we're being honest, it would be like trying to put out fire with gasoline. Geologists warn that trying to bomb a volcano might actually make things worse, a lot worse. The explosion of the bomb mixed with the buildup of pressure inside a volcano could amplify the eruption the force would release even more ash and lava, spreading it even further than it would have gone with the volcano's own power. And that's if we managed to hit the target. If the nuke missed its target, there's still a nuclear bomb being dropped in an area where people live, or at least near enough that they would feel the effects of the radiation. If you had to pick one, which would you choose? Death by lava or nuclear destruction? We can't bomb our way out of this problem, the same way we can't stop magma from building up under volcanoes. 
Here at What If, we've tried throwing trash and pouring liquid nitrogen into volcanoes. Long story short, it doesn't work. Don't mess with volcanoes. As cool as it sounds on paper, nuking a volcano just won't work. While man-made firepower can be impressive, nature isn't quaking in its boots at what we can do. But since we're messing around with volcanoes, well, why don't we use them for some good? Like dumping all of our trash into one. But that sounds like a story for another What If.